you have joined us for worship at Trinity Lutheran Church in Reading, Pennsylvania. Today is the first week of a new presidential administration. It is entering the 11th month of the time that we have been unable to be together in this space. And it is also, incidentally, the third Sunday after Epiphany. So with all those dates and time frames in mind, we gather together today to hear Jesus' news that the kingdom of God has come near. I thank you who have come near to be with us today in this way. And I thank those who participate so faithfully in providing this worship experience for you and for all of our community. We have been recording Thanksgiving for baptism liturgies from various beautiful bodies of water around Berks County. Today I will be at the um, Red Bridge on the Topohocken Creek in Wyomissing. Let us prepare ourselves for worship now as we listen to the prelude. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, 
whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, we give you thanks for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and you created heaven and earth. By the gift of water, you nourish and sustain us and all living things. Blessed be God, now and forever. By the waters of the flood, you condemned the wicked and saved those whom you had chosen, Noah and his family. You led Israel by the pillar of cloud and fire through the sea, out of slavery, into the freedom of the promised land. Blessed be God, now and forever. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, your beloved son has set us free from the bondage to sin and death and has opened the way to the joy and freedom of everlasting life. He made water a sign of the kingdom and of cleansing and rebirth. In obedience to his command, we make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, now and forever. Pour out your Holy Spirit, so that we who have been baptized live your new life. Wash away the sin of all who have been cleansed by the water of your grace and bring us forth as inheritors of your glorious kingdom. To you be given praise and honor and worship through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. 
Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone, you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Reading from Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh and that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of God, word of life. reading from 1 Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it, for the present form of this world is passing away. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you, O, o Christ. Christ. Please pray with me. Lord God, let your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Following one of the most perilous and tense presidential inaugurations in history, a new administration has been charged with governing our nation and exercising leadership in the world. Whoever you voted and wherever you fall on the political spectrum, I urge in the words of St. Paul to his friend Timothy that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. The Biden administration will not bring heaven to earth, nor will it drag us all down to hell. It will be what Luther would have called a kingdom of this world, with both virtues and shortcomings. And so we pray. We remain vigilant, and we participate in working toward a better world of justice, liberty, and peace for all people. Jesus proclaimed a different kind of kingdom, not a kingdom of this world, but the kingdom of God. He spoke about it in parables. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed or a banquet or a woman who finds a lost coin. He promised it to his followers. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. He prayed for the time the kingdom would come in all its fullness. And he encouraged us to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done. Jesus talks about the kingdom over a hundred times in the four gospels. In today's reading, at the very beginning of his ministry, we hear him preaching as he often would, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Maybe Jesus preached so much about the kingdom of God because it's so hard for people to believe that it really has come near. We've learned to be suspicious of grand promises because our earthly rulers and utopian dreams have so often let us down. What do we make of the promise that God is about to rule our lives in our world? How do we understand Jesus' proclamation 
that the kingdom of God has now been inaugurated. Sometimes it's awfully hard to believe that God is in charge. When we see National Guard troops patrolling our capital, when the death toll from COVID-19 climbs to 400,000 and continues to rise, when we're confronted by the harsh realities of closed businesses, unemployment, and poverty, when our families and congregations struggle with hardships and tragedies we cannot control, when our own spirits lag and our own faith is strained, then we might wonder if God's kingdom is really near if God's rule is close at hand. If it is, why don't we see more evidence of it in our daily lives? There's a story of an enthusiastic young Christian who bursts into the study of an elderly Jewish rabbi. The Messiah has come, he announces. Jesus of Nazareth is the Messiah, and he has brought in the kingdom of God. Unimpressed, the rabbi walks over to a small window in his study. He gazes up at the sky, then down at the ground, and he calmly replies, I see no change. At one level or another, we all struggle with the lack of evidence witnessed by that rabbi. We've heard the good news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. We believe that God has come to save us. But we also face worries and problems that can be overwhelming. Like the rabbi, we say to ourselves at times, I see no change. If God's kingdom is near to us as Jesus proclaims, why don't we see it more clearly? But notice what Jesus does as he proclaims the kingdom of God. He doesn't say, the kingdom of God has come near, so sit back and watch things get better. He says, the kingdom of God has come near, so repent, believe in the good news, and follow me. The kingdom of God, God's rule in the world, will never be seen by looking out a window, up at the sky, or down at the ground. The change God is working will seldom be noticed on the front pages of our newspapers, or the evening television news, or on social media. That's because the kingdom of God isn't something that we can sit back and watch. It's participatory. We know it by living it. We experience God's rule by letting God rule in our lives, by following Jesus, who brings the kingdom near to us by his life death, and resurrection. So as Jesus announces the kingdom of God, he immediately calls followers, disciples, not to look for the kingdom of God, but to be a part of it. Follow me, he says to some fishermen, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately, they drop their nets and follow him. And as those first disciples followed Jesus, they saw what the rest of the world could not see. They saw how their lives were changed by their relationship with Jesus. They saw how in the troubles of life, God was there to help them, comfort them, guide them, and challenge them. They saw how Christ could take what they had to offer and use it and multiply it for the good of God's people. 
They saw how even sin and death were finally defeated forever by Jesus Christ. They wouldn't have seen any of those things sitting on the sidelines. They could only experience it by participating as Christ's people in the kingdom of God. And as they took part in the kingdom, they began to realize that the Holy Spirit could use their lives to bring about the changes God desires for creation. God could use them as peacemakers, as dreamers, as comforters, as instruments of forgiveness and justice, as fishers of people for the reign of God. And the same is true for us who follow Christ today. The kingdom has come near, but if we don't join the cause, it will seem as if nothing has changed. That's why Martin Luther writes in the small catechism concerning the Lord's Prayer, God's kingdom comes indeed without our praying for it, but we ask in this prayer that it may come also to us. Where is God's kingdom in our world today? It is among us, God's people who follow God's rule. How do we see that kingdom more clearly? We see it by believing and trusting that Jesus has come to rule our lives in love. In these early days of 2021, that's our prayer as we consider the year to come. Not a prayer for miracul miraculous deliverance that we can sit back and observe, but a prayer for God's grace and power to be poured into our hearts and lives so that together as people of God, we can participate faithfully in the mission of God in this time and in the future that God opens before us. Where is God's kingdom? Look around. In the face of sickness, death, and isolation, we are people who help, who pray, and who comfort one another in Jesus' name. That's a sign of the kingdom. In a hungry world, we are people who provide food for the poor and hope for the downtrodden. That's how God's will is done. In a world that lacks moral direction, we are people who hold up to each other the example and teaching of Christ. That's a mark of God's rule. In the midst of hopelessness and fear, we are people who share the hope of Easter and the promise of God's life-giving love, not only with each other, but with all of this hurting, broken world. That's evidence that God is in charge. So rejoice, people of God, for the kingdom of God has come near to you. It's as near as your own hands, your own voices, your own prayers. It's as real as the longing in our hearts, the gratitude of our souls, and the hope we proclaim. Be a part of the marvelous things God is doing today through Jesus Christ. As you follow him, you'll participate in changing the world by the power of God's love. You will be part of the kingdom of God. Amen. Oh
Together we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe believe in God, the Father Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As each prayer petition concludes, let us pray. Please respond with, Have mercy, O God. Guided by Christ made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world, for pastors and teachers, for deacons and deaconesses, and for musicians and servers that all proclaim the good news of God's reconciling love. We pray for Christ Episcopal and Father John, for Hope Lutheran and Pastor Mary, for Christ Yoakum's Lutheran in Grill and Pastor Tom, for Bishop Eaton and the churchwide ELCA staff, and for Trinity staff, Pastor Allen, Deaconess Deborah, Karen, Peter, Matt, Rachel, Dave, and Dee. For Common Ground, Pastor Tom and Michael. And for last year's Common Ground intern, Emily Papke Larson, who was ordained this weekend. Let us pray. Have Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For skies and seas, for birds and fish, for favorable weather and clean water, and for the well-being of creation that God raise up advocates and scientists to guide our care for all the earth. Let us pray. Have Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For our nation, for the new administration during this time of transition and crisis, for those who feel disenfranchised, 
for those whose work it is to protect us from violence and insurrection, for those who provide leadership in our cities and around the world, for nonprofit and non-governmental organizations, for medical teams, for planning commissions and homeless advocates, that God inspire all people to work for the common good, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For those who are sick, distressed, or grieving, for the outcast and all who await relief, and especially for Karen, Dick, Anne, John, Joe, Lisa, Joey, Rob, Kate, Luther, Dick, Daryl, Heather, Jim, Christina, Pete, Kate, Richard, David, Maggie, Joe, Linda, Claudia, Bob, Matt, Megan, and all who have been exposed to or infected by COVID-19, that in the midst of suffering, God's peace and mercy surround them. Let us pray. Have, have mercy, mercy O God. God. For our congregation and community, for families big and small, and for our members, Barb, Michael and Corey, Mitch, Nicole, Logan and Julia, Jim and Amy, and Paul, Tracy, and Mason, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. In thanksgiving for our ancestors in the faith, whose lives serve as an example of gospel living, that they point us to salvation through Christ, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. As participants in the kingdom of God, we offer ourselves to God's service in the world. Our offering, our time, our prayers, our talents, our passions, all that we are, we offer to God. I encourage you who are able to financially support Trinity or your own congregation. For those who are not able to do that work financially right now, please know that you are valued and important to God and that the prayers you offer and the work you do are an important part of God's kingdom.
Let us pray. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen.
Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God.